Hey, it's Mr. Leatherwood and nobody else. It's all by myself today. And today I'm going to teach you how to multiply decimals using partial products, or the box method. So for some of you, this will make you very happy because you love the box method. You know who you are. Um, let's start with a kind of simple problem. 1 and 2 tenths times 3 and 4 tenths. Now, the first thing I want to do anytime I have a multiplication problem is I'm going to estimate. And the reason I estimate is it gives me a starting point. When I get to the very end of my problem, I can check my answer and see if I'm close to what my estimate was. So, for instance, for this one, I would say 1 and 2 tenths is close to 1, and 3 and 4 tenths is close to 3. So, 1 times 3 is 3. So my answer, when I get to the very end, should be something close to 3. It may be 4, it may be 2, it may be even 5 or 6, but it needs to be close to 3. So let's start by drawing my box. Since partial products, I like to use a box. You don't have to, but I'm going to show you with the box. And first thing I'm going to do, just like when we were multiplying a whole number, is I'm going to stretch out that number. I'm going to write it in expanded notation. So I'm going to do 1 plus 2 tenths. And then over here, I'm going to do 3 plus 4 tenths. And you notice I always write my 0 before my decimal. You don't have to. It just kind of helps me hold the place value. Um, so if you would prefer just to write 0.2 and 0.4, that's fine. Every time I have a plus sign, I'm going to write, draw a line. So that divides my box just where I need it to be. And then I'm going to start to multiply. So my first little box, where's my little laser? Oh, that, oh, I have it set on the Darth Vader laser. Here we go. All right, so we're going to do my first little box. 3 times 1, so that shouldn't be too hard for most of us, is 3. Then we get a little tricky. We are going to do this box over here, and it's going to be 3 times 2 tenths. Now we've talked about this before. If we have a whole number times a tenth, our answer needs to be a tenth. So a whole number times a tenth, it would be like one times a tenth would be a tenth. So three times two tenths, three times two is six, so that's going to give us six tenths. Then we're going to do this box down here, or you could do this one, but I'm going to do this one. We have one times four tenths. So again, we have a whole number times a tenth, so it's going to be a tenth. 1 times 4 is 4, so that's going to be 4 tenths. Okay, and then we're going to do our last box, 4 tenths times 2 tenths. Now here's a little tricky. So if you think about it, a tenth of a tenth, or a tenth times a tenth, is going to be a hundredth. So that means our answer needs to be in the hundredth place. 2 times 4 is 8, but we know it's going to be 8 hundredths, so we're going to draw it 0 and 8 hundredths. So it's real important to realize that when you're doing a tenth times a tenth, a tenth of a tenth is going to be a hundredth, which is why this is 8 hundredths. So then what we're going to do is we're just going to add all those together. So you can just I'm going to do 3. Notice I'm filling in my decimals, so I make sure to line up my decimals when I add. Lining up my decimals and filling in any, any blanks. That way my decimal lines up all the way down. And then when I add, I'm going to go ahead and drop that decimal to make sure we stay together. So it's just going to be 8. I'm going to regroup here. And I get 4 and 8 hundredths as my answer. Now you can notice, if you look up here, we estimated that it was going to be 3, and 4 is definitely close to 3. So that's going to help me in a second when I teach you how to do partial products, but without the decimal. So sort of makes it a little easier, but we'll, we'll see that in just a second. Okay, so let's try one more. Let's try... 4 and 5 tenths times 6 and 7 tenths. So I want you to try to do it, and then we'll see how you do, and I'll show you how to do it.
Let's go ahead and pause the video and then you try and we'll see if you do it right. All right, let's see here. So I'm make my box. Okay, oh, I forgot something. I want to estimate first. So four and five tenths. I could say that's close to four. Or I could say that's close to five. I'll just pick five just for giggles. And then six and seven tenths, eh, maybe times seven. So my answer should be close to 35. Okay, so we're going to see if that happens. So let's get, I'm going to write 4 plus 5 tenths. I'm going to write 6 plus 7 tenths. Every plus sign gets a line. Then I'm just going to start multiplying. 6 times 4 is 24. 6 times 5 tenths is going to be 30 tenths. So watch this. 30 but this has to be my tenths place, so it ends up being three holes. A little tricky there. Then I have four and seven tenths, so we know it's a whole number and a tenth, so the answer is going to be in a tenth. Four times seven is twenty-eight, but it's twenty-eight tenths, so it ends up being two and eight tenths. Then my last one, I have a tenth times a tenth, which is a hundredth. And 5 times 7 is 35, so I get 35 hundredths. And then we're just going to add those up. So I'm going to get 24, 3, 2 and 8 tenths, and 0 and 35 hundredths. Did a little different this time so you can understand when I fill in my zeros. I'm going to draw my decimal fill in all these empty blanks, that way it's easy for me to add. I'm going to bring down my decimal to make sure it lines up with everything else. I'm just going to add 8, 9, 10, 11. Regroup here. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Regroup again. And I get 30 and 15 hundredths, which if you notice is very close to my estimation up here. All right, I'm going to show you one more, but I'm going to take away the decimal and see if that will help some of y'all. So let's do, hmm, how about 1 and 3 tenths times 4 and 6 tenths. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm still going to estimate, so I'm going to turn this to 1. And 4 and 6 tenths is close to 5. So my answer is going to be close to 5. And this comes in really handy this time around. I'm going to go ahead and draw my box. Here's the difference. I'm going to make believe that these decimals aren't here. I'm going to make believe those decimals aren't there. So instead of 1 and 3 tenths, that's going to be 13. And instead of 4 and 6 tenths, it's going to be 46. And you'll see why this may help some of you that are struggling. Because now we're just going to write a normal partial product type thing or problem. And it helps us kind of get away from the fear of this decimal. So I turn this to 13 and this to four and, or 46, and you'll see why I can get the same answer here in just a second. So 40 times 10 is going to be 400. 40 times 3 is going to be 120. 10 times 6 is going to be 60. And 6 times 3 is going to be 18. I'm just going to add these like normal. So as I add these, 8, 6, 7, 8, 9, 4 plus 1 is 5. Then you're going, well, if I look up here, 1 and 3 tenths times 4 and 6 tenths definitely can't be 598. So how do I figure out where my decimal goes? Okay, well, here's how you do it. There's two ways. The first way we can do is we say, oh, we're doing a tenth times a tenth. And a tenth times a tenth is a hundredth, so I need to put make these in the hundredth place, so my decimal goes here. Another way to do it 
is to look and see at our estimate. Well, our estimate was 5, so that means if I put my decimal here, that's going to make it as close as I can to 5. Because if I move it right here, I have 598 thousandths. That's way too small. If I move it here, it's 59, and that's way too big. So this is going to be the best place to put it. Now this is sort of a trick, kind of a shortcut. So I prefer you to think of 6, you have a tenth times a tenth, so that's going to lead to us needing a hundredth. But once you understand that concept, this is kind of a shorter version of getting there. So I'm going to give you one more problem to do, and we'll see how you do. Bring it into class, and we'll check it when we get here. All right, hold on one second. All right, how about 3 and 9 tenths times 12 and 25 hundredths? Now you're going to see this changes things by going to the hundredths place over here. So I'm pushing you a little bit, and I want to see how you do. Okay, so try this on your own, and then we'll see how you do. All right, real quick, let's see. 3 and 9 tenths, so I'm going to estimate first. So that's 4, and 12 and 25 hundredths is 12, and 4 times 12 is 48. So we think our answer will be close to 48. So then I'm going to stretch out everything. I'm going to draw a box. So let's do, it's going to be a little longer. Okay, I'm going to do, ooh, this is tricky. If we get rid of the decimal place, so we do 30 plus 9, and over here, this is why it's tricky. Do a 1,000, ooh, big number, plus 200, plus 20, plus 5, ooh. Look at all that. I don't know if you can do that. Let's see. 30 times 1,000. 30,000. 30 times 200 is 6,000. 30 times 20, 600. 30 times 5, 150. Then we have 9,000. 1,800. 180 and 45. If you add all those up, so let's go ahead and do that. My video is getting so long. This is like the longest video ever. 6,000. Let's see. So I did that one. Did that one. Let's do 9,000. Let's do 1,800. Let's do 600. Woo! 180, 150, and 45. Okay, when I add all those up, I get 47,775. I'm going to get rid of that little comma because we're going to move it. You're like, oh, geez, that's a big number. That can equal 3 and 9 tenths times 12 and 25 hundredths. And you're right. But we look up here and our estimate's close to 48. So we can figure out where our decimal goes. Or we can look up here. A tenth times a hundredth is going to equal a thousandth. So that tells me that I need to put my decimal place right here. Because that puts those 775 in the thousands place. And we're close to our estimate of 48 because we got 47 and 775 thousandths. All right. Good job. Practice a few on your own. Do it both ways. Do it with the decimal, without the decimal, and figure out which way you like best. Um, I honestly, I think I am starting like, eh, I like the way with the decimal. That's my choice. All right. I hope you enjoyed it. Come in with some questions and we'll work them out.